You're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and you are listening to Cord Knot and Ladder Magic. I'm including all of these ideas into the same episode because they all have to do with each other. Um, And it is a relatively easy to understand form of magic. So it's probably going to be a relatively short episode too. give you a little break in here. (laughs) So knots and cord magic refer to the same thing because you are tying knots into the cord. So some people call it cord magic, some people call it knot magic. And then the ladder magic, specifically a witch's ladder, is a subsect of that. So they all kind of go together. Before we get into the specifics of what that is and what they have to do with each other, let's go back to knots in the first place because knots are something that we really don't think about today in society, but they used to be indispensable. Knots were used to secure clothing, to secure fishing lines and arrowheads to sticks for hunting so people couldn't eat without them. And they were used to thatch together shelter. So they were really very useful in society. And that's something that we don't have today because now we have glue and tape and uh, zippers and buttons and all kinds of ways to fasten items that we really don't use knots anymore. I think that knot tying, like the the fancy kinds of knots, is still part of Boy Scouts. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. I was not in Boy Scouts. I was a Girl Scout. And we did not learn how to tie knots. We learned how to tie friendship bracelets. And I'll get to that later in this episode. But uh, I I think that's a Boy Scout skill because there are so many different knots. Um, But it's not something that we think about today as much as they used to. But knowing which one was the right knot and how to tie it became so valuable in society that magical power was given to both the knots themselves and to the person who knew how to tie them. Because knots were also extremely unreliable. Knots tied in fiber or rawhide had a way of coming untied as if by their own power. You have probably experienced this just tying your shoes. At some point, they just seem to come undone. And maybe that's why knots are so important in Boy Scouts, because there's different ones that are so much more secure. So men, of course, came to believe that knots possessed this magical power that could be used for good or evil. And gradually, that power shifted to those that were skilled in tying these knots. And this skill passed from one generation to the next and of course became associated with witches. As a form of witchcraft, this skill persisted throughout the 19th century. Now, today, of course, we have weather forecasters that predict when a storm is coming. We watch them on the news every day. So for this time in scientific-oriented society, it's really difficult to understand um, that people used to believe in the magic of wind knots, but that's exactly what they used to believe. They were called wind brokers or witches who could imprison the wind in a knotted string, and they were hired and flourished Anywhere that survival depended on the strength and direction of the wind, which, as you can imagine, would be seaports and sailing. So these wind knots were purchased from witches at seaports everywhere, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Ireland, Scotland. That's where we get a lot of the um, mythology and folklore from and have these, these stories of these knots being sold, but really they were everywhere. So in the days of sailing ships... No sailor would leave the harbor without his witch's knot because they were so vulnerable to the forces of the weather. So the sailors wanted to control the wind through witchcraft. They believed that they could carry the wind aboard the ship in this knotted string where it would remain secured for a safe voyage. And then if the wind failed them, the sailor could untie a knot and release the wind that was in that knot. And this concept is prevalent in a lot of mythology. There is a Norse myth that tells how Volundar kept a supply of wind knots and there was a, it was a long rope with knots at regular intervals. And then at every one of those knots, a storm wind was bound. 
and each week he would untie a knot and free the wind, sending it south with thunder and hail. And to this day, the bitter winds that sweep across the Gulf of Finland are blamed on witches. There's also a story in the Odyssey where Aeolus, king of the wind, gave Ulysses a leather bag containing all of the winds except for the west wind. After nine days of sailing, Ulysses fell asleep and his men untied the bag. So all of the conflicting winds burst forth out of the bag, driving the ship back to Aeolus's island so Ulysses could not escape. And I remember the story clearly because that was I mean, senior year. I've mentioned on this podcast that I took Latin for many years. In senior year, we had to translate the Odyssey from Latin into English. That was like our assignment all year long. Super fun. So yes, I remember the story clearly about the wind. So lots of mythology and lots of history of witches claiming to rule the wind and selling this power to control it. They would sometimes report this witchcraft being used for evil purposes where they sold contrary winds. Specifically in Lapland in 1767, a witch confessed to raising a storm by shutting winds in a sack. So she was hung when the sailors who bought her knots lost their ship and their lives at the sea. Now, as we're going to get into for doing this magic for yourself, three is a consistent number that you see tying the knots in, in three. And, you know, for many reasons, three is persistent throughout witchcraft three nine thirteen they come up all the time if you want an episode about numerology let me know you can make that happen um to talk about what the different meanings of each number are but when we were talking about these wind knots the formula was to tie three knots into a cord while of course repeating you know magic words that only the witches knew and the Bell was sealed by spitting on each of the knots as it was tied. Untying the first knot would bring a gentle breeze. The second knot was a stronger wind. And then the third knot contained a hurricane. So it was supposed to be remained completely tied to ensure a completely storm-free voyage. But again, they would release just one of them to get a gentle breeze to get going. But that was the idea of these three knots. Before we get into how to use these for yourself, I want to also look at the history of the witch's ladder, because this is the sort of form of knot magic that comes up most often um, and can be very useful. And witches love to use it. It makes a great decoration. But this history of you know exactly how it came about is debated, and it's not really as ancient as you might believe, and definitely not as ancient as the witch's knots that were used for sailors. So the witch's ladder, which is also known as rope and feathers, is a form of knot magic in folk magic and or witchcraft in general. And it is made from knotted cord or hair, and that constitutes the spell. And charms are knotted or braided with specific magical intention into the cord. And uh, like the regular knot magic, the number of knots and the types of charms used vary with whatever the intended effect is of the spell. So the first recorded witch ladder was found in an old house in Wellington in England, which was demolished in 1878. So it's really not as ancient as you might believe that it is. Uh, Six brooms, an old armchair, and a rope with feathers woven into it, which is where the term rope and feathers comes from, were found in a space that separated the roof from the upper room, and it was inaccessible from the interior of the house. So that led to all kinds of ideas about why that might be and uh, how witches might use that. And this specifically rope with feathers was eventually donated to a historical society and the person who sent it in put a note with it saying that it was a witch's ladder. Since because of where it was found, there was no other way to cross that roof. So the woman who lived there must have been a witch and used that quote unquote ladder to cross that roof, which is where this ladder term comes from rather than the garland term that's used in Italy. 
So there's no real documentation. People just kind of came up with it as they found it. When Charles Godfrey Leland, who was a folklorist originally from Philadelphia, received the news of this Wellington find, he was studying folklore in Italy. So while he was in Italy, he investigated and found that the witches there used a similar form called a witch's garland, which was made out of cord and contained black hen feathers. Um, And that was specifically used for curses. A curse was uttered as each knot was tied, and then the item was placed under the victim's bed to cause ill fortune. Leland's Italian version differs from the one that was found in England because the feathers were knotted into the cord instead of braided, and the cord had the hairs of the victim braided into it. And he also claimed that uh, a key part of this witch's garland was placing the image of a hen next to the garland, upon a cross of black pins and then the whole item is then hidden in the mattress of the person that you're trying to curse. Leland claims that the curse is lifted by finding the hen that the feathers were plucked from and finding the garland and throwing the whole thing into a running river and then whoever the victim is has to be taken into a church while a baptism is being carried out and they must repeat a certain spell before bathing in holy water. It it was a whole complicated thing uh, that Leland looked into and researched. And that is pretty different from finding a rope with feathers in an attic space um, in this house in England. But they all sort of started falling under this category of witch's ladder. This was then further solidified by Reverend Sabine Baring Gould of England, who wrote an extensive article on the witch's ladder in his novel, Kurgunven, published in 1893. In his account, the ladder was made of black wool with white and brown thread, and at every two inches, it was tied around a rooster feather. The maker would then weave into it the aches and pains and other ailments intended for the victim. The ladder was then thrown into the bottom of a pond located on Bodmin Moor, and it was believed that as the bubbles rose to the top of the pond, the curse was released. So all of these stories had enough of the same elements in common that they all started falling under this umbrella of witch's ladder. So again, it is still debated. It is not one of those things that was written down that we have really rich history of. There's a lot of other you know, spell work that has been written around, written about for much more than 200 years. We have a lot of records of that. This is not something that has that sort of records behind it, but witches today still find it uh, incredibly useful. All right, so now we are getting into the fun stuff of how you can use this in your own practice and how to make these different methods work for you. So first, we're going to talk about not in cord magic in general, and then about the specifics of e witches letter. So the most common way that knot or cord magic is used is through sympathetic magic. And this is probably what most people are familiar with when they talk about binding. You use a cord to bind two things together that represents people, items, situations, like having two pop-up dolls and tying them together. That is binding those two people together. You can also bind something away from you. You can bind, you know, if you have a bad habit like smoking, you would take a pack of cigarettes and wrap the cord around that to bind those cigarettes. And then, you know, people freeze them, they bury them, get rid of them, throw them away. And that is a form of sympathetic magic, binding that thing away from you. It's also in the craft, the original. I still have not seen the legacy Uh, But in the original craft, she binds the picture of Nancy to bind that away from you. And that is just wrapping the cord around that. The cords, of course, can be used on their own as well. You don't have to have objects. You can just use two cords to bind together. What you use is completely up to you. There are a lot of different options, obviously, for cords. You could use uh, natural twine. You can use ribbons. Um, yarn, anything that can be knotted or braided together. And you can use any colors as well. 
and use the color associations of that. Again, color associations were in uh, the candle episode in season one, uh, but they are pretty straightforward. So you could use a cord color that represents yourself. Uh, for me, that would be black, like my Scorpio color, and uh, another cord to represent your intention. So if it was a job I was trying to keep, I would use a green cord and I would tie those two together to keep me bound to that job. This is also the idea behind hand fastings, which are very popular in the season coming up, Beltane and at Letha, when couples are going to get married in a pagan ceremony. Hand fastings is really popular and that is where the couple will join hands and then whoever is presiding over the ceremony will take ribbons it's usually like multicolored ribbons like um on a maypole using all those different colors it's similar to that and uh whoever is presiding over the ceremony will wrap those ribbons around the hands to bind those two people together and usually the, it, it's not tight or anything uh the when the ceremony is over the people can flip their hands out and keep that braided cord um in their bedroom as, you know, a sign of love and fertility and all those things associated with marriage. So that is the general idea behind a hand fasting. Is this knot magic? And really the general idea is that knots and braids in particular are very strong. And you see this with knotted breads that um, I, Tara did a video of this. If you want to check that out of knotting breads for I think she did it for Lamas, but that's very popular in uh, Wiccan celebrations for each of the Sabbaths. There's always some sort of knot imagery, the Celtic knot. It's th th this idea that these knots and braids um, are very secure and powerful and are holding your intention in there as you are creating them. can also be used to unbind things. So if you are feeling very stuck to someone or something, you feel like you can't get away, you can tie a very tight knot in a thin piece of string. And I say thin because you want it to be difficult to unravel. You want to be frustrated because the emotions tied up in this situation are also very difficult to unravel. So once you have that really tight knot in a thin piece of string that's going to make you crazy, then you untie it. So you really have to put in the effort to get yourself untangled. And ideally, again, you pick a color to match the problem. But that is another way if you are feeling very you know, stressed over a situation, anxious, and you just need to let those feelings go, you can put all that work into untying this tiny little knot um, and get all of your frustrations and emotions out that way and no longer be bound to that situation that's wearing at you. And then, of course, is the spell casting, which is where the witch's ladders fall under. And I did want to mention really quickly that there is something known as meditational witch's ladders, which you know, one example of this is a cord with 40 different knots or 40 different beads or charms on there. These are usually tied specifically to trance work, often in relation to a deity. They usually require a lot of planning and are often taught to you by someone else, such as in a coven setting. They tend to mark an initiation, and the knots serve as guideposts to getting back to the same gnosis point that you were at during a initiation. They're often worn as markers to show what levels or ceremonies we've gone through, but it only makes sense to other people in your coven. But there are witches' gatherings. Uh, they're coming back now as we are having more gatherings in person, but a lot of people will wear them. So I wanted you to know what those are when you see a knotted cord hanging down um, around someone's neck, sort of like the cords that they give you at graduation when you're in honor society and things. Um, and they are also often worn around the waist. So if you see somebody wearing those, it is a marker that they have achieved some sort of level or ceremony within their coven setting. And a lot of these are similar to a rosary, if you're familiar with that concept. And a rosary has a certain number of beads on it that lead you in prayer so you don't lose your spot. And that is the same idea of this meditational witch's ladder. The knots are used to count during chants and meditation so the witch doesn't lose her place 
as she is doing the chanting and meditations if she has to hit a certain number. So these items aren't incredibly common, but I wanted you to know that they exist. So spell crafting. This is the idea of tying the knots into a cord, usually three or nine, like the wind knots, except instead of holding the wind, these are wishes, curses, or blessings. They can even be protections. That's a very common one. And like I mentioned at the beginning, even friendship bracelets are a form of this. So if you've ever made those, had a little yarn and did all the intricate designs when you were a kid and gave those to your friends, that is a form of not magic and folk magic that as kids, we didn't even really know that we were doing witchcraft, but you are. You are making these friendship bracelets. You are picking the colors because you have associations with them or you are giving them to a friend who has associations with them. And as you are making that, you are putting your intention into it. You are making it for a specific friend. And then when you give it to them, you are telling them, I am giving you my love and friendship and protection with this bracelet. So while you are wearing it, my love and friendship and protection is around you even when I'm not there. That is a you know definite form of folk magic that uh, kids all over the world take part in. So it's the basis of this spell work. It really is pretty simple. It's just a cord. And a knot is either tied or untied. So it can be as complicated. There are a lot of complicated, when you look at like friendship bracelets, there's so many complicated knots. It could just be, you know, like a bunny ears knot. It can be as, as easy as you want, or it can be one of those more complicated ones. Up to you. But everything, past the get a cord, tie a knot into it, everything else is up to you. The type of cord, the color, any charms you want to include. It's really the knot that is the container of the intention. That is what's storing the energy. And then when you untie it, you release that intention into the universe or you decide that you are breaking the spell. So not magic is actually one of the easiest types of spells to end. So a lot of witches will use not magic if they know that they're going to have an end date to what they would like to do and they want the easiest sort of spell to end or when they're not sure, want to see how it works. They will use knot magic so they can end it quickly because it's a lot easier to just untie that knot and be done with it and break the spell rather than having to, you know, take apart a spell jar and cleanse items, bury them, dispose of them. Untying a knot is much easier. So the very basic and most common uh, type of knot magic specifically related to making it into a witch's ladder is to do this at this time of year when the weather is getting nicer and you're getting outside and you have a garden, fire coming around, a lot of witches will make a witch's ladder out of natural materials. So they take a natural biodegradable twine and they just collect nine sticks. Make a loop at one end um, so you can be able to hang it and then work your way down the twine with your nine sticks and tie the twine around the stick, making a knot. And as you do that, each knot and stick is a wish that you have that you would like to be fulfilled over the summer or all the way going in through the rest of the year. And then you hang that outside in your garden and they will slowly fall apart, you know, naturally and return to the earth. And as that comes apart and is released back into nature, that is sort of your wishes being granted, your wishes going out into the universe. That is a really easy and fun one. All you just need to go outside and collect a couple of sticks and, and grab some twine that you know will is natural and will be biodegradable. And it's a very easy way to um, get out there, connect with nature, and release your wishes into the universe. Likewise, with this idea of nine and nine knots is a chant that is popular with Wiccans but can be used by anyone. And I will have this you know, written at witchwednesdays.com, so you can look it up. Um, again, I did not come up with this. This is the chant that everybody uses, and it is when they are, whether they are breeding or just tying the twine, there is a chant that you say when you do each knot. So the chant is, by knot of one, the spell's begun. By knot of two, the magic comes true. By knot of three, so shall it be. By knot of four, this power is stored. By not of five, my will shall drive. By not of six, the spell I fix. By not of seven, the future I leaven. By not of eight, my will be fate. By not of nine, what is done is mine. So that is the 
chant that is popular when people are, you know, weaving or tying their witch's ladder and timing, you know, that phrase to right when you are making that knot to really hold your intention in there and make it even stronger. Again, three, nine, and 13 are very popular numbers for this, but you can use any number that makes sense to you, whether it is based on numerology, whether it's based on your birthday, uh, your lucky number, any sort of number uh, will be fine for this. Like I said, it can just be knots, nine knots along there, but another popular way and probably the one that you see on, mostly on social media is tying charms at each of those spots. Similar to just tying branches, you would go down and tie a particular charm at each of those knot spaces. And the charms that you use would be completely dependent on what you are creating this spell and this witch's letter for. They can be made for protection, for love, for peaceful sleep, anti-anxiety, anything that you would make a spell for using a candle spell or a jar spell, you can also do in a witch's letter. So that is everything that I wanted to share on knot and cord magic and witch's ladders. Uh, I do knot magic more often than it seems like because I don't, you know, set out intentionally to do just a knot spell completely on its own, but I do like to make charm bags a lot and I use um, spell bags fairly often and they always have a uh, cord at the top to tie it and I specifically put my intention into those knots when I am tying that um, bag together and I know that by you know, tying that knot sometimes I do in fact tie it three times something about the number three uh, depending on what the working is for and I know I am doing that because there is an extra layer of protection on that uh, I haven't done any knot magic that's related to cursing so I haven't spit on any of my knots but that's an option too but if you would like to see me make a witch's ladder specifically then that is going to be up on YouTube on Friday this coming Friday so in two days so if you don't follow me over on YouTube definitely check that out uh, that is always linked through Instagram and at witchwednesdays.com and it's also just <laughs> which Wednesdays on YouTube it's fairly easy to find and that is everything that I wanted to share. So if you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any other ways that you work with knots in your magic, uh, I know that knitting and crocheting is very popular, but I have no experience, <laughs> no skills in that area. So no experience with that whatsoever. But the idea would be the same, that you are knotting, crocheting, knitting your intention into whatever you are making. And I know that um, knitting together baby blankets for this reason and knitting them with protection um, is another popular method. So if you have any that you would like to share, definitely head over to the Discord server and chat with the other witches there. Everybody's always got, you know, really fun ideas uh, that they're always sharing of how they work a particular method of magic. And that is everything that I have for you this week, and I will see you next week. Need even more? Subscribe to Patreon and YouTube for exclusive bonus content. Order a themed witchcraft box every month through Witch Wednesdays on Etsy. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.